Hey there everyone, welcome to Nerdy Shogun. My name is Jonathan, and I'm here with my co-host and partner. Ray. And we are here to review a classic character from the history of Dragon Ball Z. We are here to give our fair thoughts and analysis to the most iconic villain of the franchise, Frieza. And Ray, we'll go ahead and start off with you, since you've just gotten first into Dragon Ball. So let's hear what your <laughs> thoughts are on him. Well, first off, I really didn't think I would uh, get this far in Dragon Ball. I am actually on the Boo arc, um, so that's fun. But um, honestly, when I first met Frieza, I was always interested in him, and I always thought he was just a fascinating character uh, overall, especially his voice. I think the um, voice actor uh, did such a such a fantastic job voicing Frieza, making it sound almost alien-like, and just making the role seem real. I do agree with you there, and while I didn't get introduced to Linda Young, I did get introduced to Chris Ayers, who also provides that kind of slimy, diplomatic type of voice for Frieza. So, mm -hmm. so either one, in my opinion, really takes the cake and just bringing out that menace to such an iconic character. Exactly. I don't know who exactly did Frieza for um, Dragon Ball, um, but I, I think I think it was Linda. I believe it was. Yeah, yeah, you're right. For the original cast of DBZ, it was Linda Young who did the original voice of Frieza. As for Christopher Ayers, he came around for Dragon Ball Z Kai and then went around for Super until his untimely death. May he rest in peace. But what are some other thoughts that you have on this character? Like, what are some things that you think are really cool about him? Um, I would have to say um, the way he was able to just think of different ways to destroy the planet and just different ways of trying to make things work. I have to say he wasn't at all dumb. Um, I feel like he really knew what he was doing, and I feel like, yeah, maybe he did make a couple of mistakes here and there, but I do feel like Frieza was one of those people that was like, you don't mess with him because he will fuck you up, basically. Um, basically. But I also... <laughs> yeah, he'll, be, he'll mess you up. Um, forgive me, it's been, like, I don't know how long since I've seen the Frieza arc, um, so I'm kind of rusty on him, but I'm going to try my hardest to, like, remember all the good details about him. But, um, also, I have to say, like, the Ginyu Force, uh, Frieza, just all of them in general are just so entertaining to me, and every time they appeared on screen, it just made me more and more excited to see them. Yeah, and for folks, in case you're wondering, we're just talking about Dragon Ball Z Frieza. We're not going to get into Super just yet, so don't start spoiling in the comments, for the love of God. Please don't. I really want to keep uh, Dragon Ball as pure as possible. I want all the surprises. But yeah, I honestly can agree with you, though, with a lot for Frieza, because he is such an iconic character, and to me, there's a lot of personal history when you think about it with him as well as Goku and Vegeta, seeing as how he originally had the Saiyans under his thumb, using them as his own personal soldiers, and from there, he decides that eventually they're just too much of a threat to keep around, believing that they could possibly overthrow him, and as such, he's like, well, might as well go ahead and get rid of him. Mm -hmm. And I gotta say, the biggest one, though, was definitely Vegeta, was how much Frieza seemed to affect him. Like, you notice how he has a lot of hatred towards Frieza, but also a lot of fear in Dragon Ball Z. Yes, for sure. Like, you noticed it too, right? Like, he had that, like, subtle fear of Frieza for a while. It, although he didn't want to admit that he was scared, yes, he had a lot of fear towards Frieza. Ex you know, because his pride. <laughs> exactly. The, the prideful prince always gets his teeth knocked out when he tries to be cocky. <laughs> happened to Cell, happened to Frieza, yeah. Yeah, and honestly... It's still always just funny to watch Vegeta get the crack kicked out of him by a more powerful character when he just lets his ego get the better of him. It's just, it's like, it's like watching a train wreck. It's so awful that you can't look away because it's so weirdly entertaining. It is. And 
and you think you know he would learn from this you think he'd be like okay you know what i fucked up i had let my pride get the best of me i'm sorry no he's like no i'm cocky i'm i got this i don't need goku's help i'm stronger than goku i'm better than him and then he gets the crap beat out of him and he's like oh well never mind <laughs> i think you mean kakarot <laughs> freaking kakarot. kakarot yeah kakarot <laughs> Um, going back to, uh, Frieza real fast, um, can I just say, uh, his dad, Frieza's dad, Cole, um, oh I just God. love, I still love the, when he says, what in the hell is a Goku? <laughs> I just love <laughs> that. This is, like, the most, like, oh my God, I'm not sure how to put it. It's, like, flamboyant, I guess would be the right word. He's like, what on earth is a Goku? <laughs> yes. And the fact that... And I just I just love how Frieza's like, Dad, don't embarrass me. <laughs> right, he's just like straight up like, Daddy, not in front of the malcontent. <laughs> Honestly, though, I cannot wait for you though, to see more of a bridged Frieza. Though. Can, can I just rant about him a little bit, please? Please do. Okay, so a bridged Frieza to me, I don't know why, but he is such an icon. Especially at one point when he's in like his final form and he's facing a bridged Goku. And he just decides to be cocky as hell and saying, Oh, come now, if I'm really as evil as you say I am, then may God strike me down where I stand. And a freaking bolt of lightning actually shoots down from the sky onto him. Barely does a damn thing. And you know what Frieza says? He just goes, Ha! Nice try, jackass. Next time, give it your A game. Ah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great. Like, he's just so damn cocky, and I love it. Especially when he gets the crap kicked out of him by Super Saiyan Goku. But, anyways. Um, so... I will say that you will see a lot more of Frieza in Super, just saying that right now, and I cannot wait for you to see how he progresses as a character. You will definitely be surprised at how he returns, and as well as what he does later on. I cannot wait. Um, I do remember seeing um, Frieza, Cole, the, I think the Genu Force, and Cell, all together in Hell, and they're like, oh, we have a better <laughs> chance of beating you. Unintentional <laughs> rhyme is funny. They get the crap beat out of him again. But I have to just say, every time I saw Frieza, I just got so excited because, well, again, I know I've only watched the Dragon Ball Z, and I'm pretty, well, I guess I'm pretty close to being done with Dragon Ball Z. But so far, Frieza's been the one that stuck out to me the most. I just find his character so fascinating, and every time he's on screen, he always manages to make me laugh. And don't get me wrong, like, Cell was a good was a good bad guy boo which i'm kind of like in the beginning of boo and i kind of just barely got to know him he's a fun character as well which don't get me mm -hmm. wrong boo actually kind of scares the shit out of me right now mm -hmm. but anyway, that's a whole different topic um i really really like uh Frieza. i've liked him since the beginning and i just think he's just a really well character made on in dragon ball i do agree with you there he really is like just an iconic character a lot of people are major fans of frieza and not without good reason i could definitely say that right now but if i can say this one thing i remember one of the scariest moments of frieza was not even just like the power of forms but like when he was still in his base one form and he hadn't even transformed yet and this is actually from a special that i don't think you've seen yet bardock the father of goku So, yeah, this actually details, like, what happens to Planet Vegeta, like, right before Frieza destroys it. And what essentially happens here is that you have Bart. I think you might have actually seen it in a flashback, as a matter of fact. Probably did, I just can't remember um, at the time. So, it's like that one scene where Frieza is remembering, like, someone who looked very similar to Goku. And it flashes back to a dude who's, like, wearing a red headband with, like, a scar on his cheek. Yeah, okay, I remember that now. Yeah. That was actually Bardock, Goku's father. Oh, okay. Yeah, and eventually they did make like a full special of it with Bardock, the father of Goku, which details Bardock's time before Planet Vegeta was ultimately destroyed and how he came to learn about Frieza's treachery. And I I'm going to say this right now. Bardock has got to be one of my favorite characters from Dragon Ball Z. 
and for a very good reason. Like he's a Saiyan who never even once ascended to Super Saiyan. He never ever found it, but he was definitely one of the stronger soldier types for the Saiyans. But the thing is, what amazes me about him is that even after having his whole squad wiped out and everything else like that, he has the brass balls to fly up to Frieza's ship, demand he come out and face him, and tries to take him out. Like, you gotta admit, that takes some stones right there. That's some balls. Exactly. And But the fact that Frieza just, like, laughs this off as he's powering up a massive supernova technique just goes to show how terrifying he is as a character. Yes. Like, if he can make the equivalent of Death Star-sized beams of energy and just toss them at planets in just his base one form... God, I cannot imagine the fear the Z Fighters felt as they were facing him. And this is coming from someone who has not really watched a lot of the Dragon Ball anime. Like, I've seen bits and pieces of the DBZ anime itself, as well as watched all of Super. But I have a lot of knowledge about it from the games, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to say right now, Frieza was a pain to fight every time, because he kept on upgrading himself. Gosh. And, like, every single time he did, I was just like, will you just freaking die already? As I'm trying to pound him into mincemeat from, like, Krillin, Gohan, as a kid, and even Super Saiyan Goku. Was he that type of character where if you died, um, like, was it the type of game where if you died, then you would have to basically start all the way over to, like, his first form again? Or would you have, like, save points? Like, you would have to restart the fight all over again. Oh, dang, that sucks. Yeah, no, it was a total pain in the ass, especially, like, Budokai 3, though. Oh, I gotta say, though, one of my favorite moments was definitely tossing Frieza around like a ragdoll when I got a good combo on him. <laughs> like, it was just, yeah. like, it was just so much fun doing that, as well as, like, f- trying to finish him off with, like, a Kamehameha. Yes. Like, I don't know if it's just me or if anyone else has done this, but one of the, my favorite things to do every time when it comes to, like, fighting games and such is always finish them with a power move. I, I don't know why, but it's just, like, that epic finisher, you know what I mean? Yes, I totally understand. Especially with Frieza, though, I felt such satisfaction at blasting him either with a spirit bomb or the Kamehameha just to tell him, There, you're dead. You're done. <laughs> F off, you're done. No more. Oh my god, though, but I cannot wait for you to see some of the other villains, though, from DBZ. I'm not talking just, like, the canon TV show, babe. I'm talking about, like, the movie villains, and you'll be like, how are these people still alive? Oh, sweet. Honestly, I just can't wait, because I heard after Dragon Ball Z, I can start watching some of the movies without, like, spoiling anything. So, I'm just really excited to see more Dragon Ball. Honestly, I'm obsessed um, I actually have I'm a poster sad, of sad. Dragon Ball. I, uh, actually was about to buy, a like, a hat of Dragon Ball, but then I ended up making, like, a custom hat that says, like, keep calm and watch anime. So, like, in, it's, like, every anime that I've watched, I can just, like, put it in one hat. But, um, no, I'm obsessed with, uh, Dragon Ball to the point where I think about it when I'm at work. I'm just like, man, I have to be watching Dragon Ball right now. I know, it's always like that, especially with, like, an addictive anime, like, how you got me into One Piece again. And it's just like, oh, oh man, I can't stay here. I gotta keep watching One Piece. It's just, it's always like that with a really good show. Yes, in Castlevania. Oh, my gosh. Right, like, you kept on going back to that one, like, obsessing over the characters, which we will be talking about some of those in the future, guys, especially Castlevania. Oh, yes. That was definitely one of the biggest impacts of watching anime for me, especially because I was on such a down low uh, with watching anime, just kind of burnt out. Uh, Dra- uh, Castlevania really, really helped, and Dragon Ball, I guess you could say. Dragon Ball Z yeah. really helped me get back into watching anime again. And, like, it still amazes me, though. Like, how far, like, when did you first start watching DBZ, babe? Uh, last year. Um, about, about January, I started watching Dragon Ball, and then we started doing those challenges where we would challenge each other to watch a certain amount of a show before a certain amount, like a certain time, and so that kind of got me more into Dragon Ball Z, or actually no, Dragon Ball, the first Dragon Ball. Right, right. And then I kept going after that, you know? Yeah, and the fact that already, like, nearly close to the end of this year, as a matter of fact... The fact that you've already watched not only the original Dragon Ball, but also nearly finished all of DBZ, like, that is just 
mad brownie points right there. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's, a, it's a very addictive anime, for sure. I have to say, I have to say, why in the heck have I not watched it sooner? It's just such a good anime. I just love Dragon Ball. I'm sure a lot of people feel that way whenever they see a long anime, and they're like, why didn't I do this sooner? And they're kicking themselves, yes. both physically and mentally. I think because most of the time, it's such a long anime and so overwhelming, especially like One Piece, it's up to like a thousand episodes. You're just thinking, how can I watch a thousand episodes? But then when you start watching an anime and you absolutely love it, it's easy. You know, it just becomes so easy and such a secondary thing for you because you just don't really think about the episode. You just think about wanting to continue. Right, right. I 100% agree. And honestly, with Frieza being such an iconic villain here, like going back to him for a bit, what would you say is one of your favorite forms of his that you saw? Oh, gosh. Again, it's been so long since I've seen... Uh... Thing Frieza, I can't even remember. Uh huh. Well, there's the iconic first form, which is like his one where he's wearing like the breastplated armor, like he's very small with the horns and the pointed tail. And then you've got right. his second form where he's like much taller. He kind of looks like a miniature King Cole in a way. And then you have form three, which looks like the closest thing he's ever going to become to a massive xenomorph from Alien. And then, of course, you got his massive final form, which is the most iconic one, you know? Oh, the one that looks kind of inappropriate, that one. Which one? Uh, the one where he kind of looks kind of inappropriate, almost, because his head looks really long. Oh, like the third form? Um, okay, I would have to say the form, the skinnier form, where he's like... So you're talking about... You know, like, I think it's the second form. I believe it's the second form that I'm thinking of. I think that's my favorite one. The second one where he's, like, much taller and everything else? Like, much bulkier looking like King Cold? Is it that one? Maybe. Oh, my God. But if you're no, talking... no, it's not that one. No, you're talking about, like, the final form, right? Maybe. Not, not the one with the long... The, like, this is the one that... Without the, without the armor, and he's just kind of his normal self-looking one. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, yeah. The final form where he's like very smooth with all the gems across his body. Um, where he's like pure, so. where he's like pure white with all the purple parts on him. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, that's the final form. So yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, the final form. Yeah, that one. Sorry, I'm just like, I'm like, I think, but I can't remember. <laughs> no, that's I get it. I love Frieza, guys. I love him a lot. I just can't remember. <laughs> I know, right? It's just like you can't remember him at all. Thanks. Dang, I got exposed. <laughs> They're exposed. They're exposed. No, folks, ring the bell for shame. 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 <laughs> shame. shame. <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, no, I could definitely tell you that his final form is the most iconic one, so I can definitely agree with you, though. But if I were to pick a personal for myself, I would have to say I like his mecha form. Mostly just because I like how it's like the scrapyard variant of Frieza. You know, like he's half man, half machine. Well, not half man, half alien. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it's like all these jumbled up scrapyard style parts that put him back together as Mecha Frieza. And I got to say, when I actually unlocked that in, uh, I think it was DBZ Budokai 3 is like a another form that he could reach. I was like, yes, give me Mecha Frieza. Let's go. Yes. It's kind of like that uh, final save thing, like where if you get knocked out and your health depletes, that you have that last minute save. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. It's like that last minute revive. Yeah, Mega Frieza was like that in the game, and I'm just like, yes, let's go. Gosh, I just hope. I, well, I guess you you said I, I do see him more, which kind of makes me more excited and wanting to watch more Dragon Ball because I get to see him more. Um, yeah. I just, man, I just can't wait, honestly. I know. I cannot wait for you to start reaching Super, though. I'm close. Getting there, so leave it surely. You're in the Majin Buu arc. You're getting there. I am. I can't believe I'm on se uh To let you guys know and kind of, like, catch you up a little bit, I'm on Season 8, so ep and then, like, Episode 16, I believe. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, So I did meet Boo, and, again, we'll talk more about other characters from Dragon Ball. Um, but just seeing Boo and finally
finally being able to meet him is kind of an honor to me. I've always wanted to meet this character as well. So it's kind of fun to have that reward of seeing Boo, and I can't wait to see more of him as well. But um, going back to Frieza, um, I also have to say, just his whole arc was just all in all enjoyable. I don't think there was ever a dull moment in Frieza's, um, Frieza's arc at all. No, I have to agree with you there. Like, just from playing it alone in the games, like playing against Ginyu, trying to fight all these other characters like the Ginyu Force of Raccoon, Jis, Ginyu, all of them, even a possessed Goku at one point, and then finally Frieza. Man, was it rewarding to get through that grind. Mm hmm But anyways, you guys, we're going to go and wrap it up for now here, but we hope you all enjoyed this little Frieza analysis and us just being dorks together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like, that's something you're definitely going to see more of us, though. We're both, like, just major anime dorks, so just bear with us here. We really are, and we both, uh, go off track, as you can tell. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> forgive us for that, but, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to get more into Dragon Ball. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more fun and excitement. But, again, please do not spoil anything in the comments. I really want to watch Dragon Ball as it is and have no spoilers. But all in all, I hope you guys really enjoyed this, and I hope you guys had a lot of fun, and you guys join it again. Yeah, and once again, thank you all for listening. If you like what we do here, feel free to leave a like, comment your thoughts on our analysis down below, or subscribe if you're curious for more future content. We really appreciate your support. Thank you all once again for listening. I'm Jonathan. I'm Ray. And this has been Nerdy Shogun. We'll see you all in the yeah. next video.